Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Moses, Dr. Jenny, and today we're going to learn to use PSPP, the free version of SPSS, to do a one-way ANOVA. And as a reminder, PSPP is laid out a lot like Excel, where we have variables, characteristics that can be different among people along the columns, and different people that are represented along the rows. And you have a choice between data view, where you can see people's actual data, and variable view, where you can see the names that we call the different variables. Now, mostly this uh, in these series of videos, we've been using the analyze function in PSPP to explore data. And today will be no exception. So in PSPP, to do a one-way ANOVA, you can click the analyze option. Now, what is a one-way ANOVA? An analysis of variance, which is what ANOVA stands for, is where you look at the influence of what we call a factor, which is a group-based or categorical variable. We look to see if that factor influences some quantitative or measured variable, something that varies along a continuum. So we might want to see if three different um, therapy groups differ in depression, right? Depression is going to have an average for the first group, an average for the second group, and an average for the third group. And we're going to use an ANOVA to explore to see if the averages among these three groups differ in terms of depression. Now, there are more advanced ANOVA uh, questions we could ask that introduces multiple different variables, but for today, we're going to keep things simple and do an analysis of variance that is called a one-way ANOVA, where we look at how one factor, one group-based variable, impacts one quantitative variable. So let's launch right in. So we're going to click on Analyze, and then this drop-down menu will appear. What you were good. Now, we actually have a choice at this point. In PSPP, there are two options, two, for doing an ANOVA. The first is we could choose compare means and then choose the one-way ANOVA, which again is one factor, one group-based variable, and how it influences one quantitative variable. How does the therapy you get influence your uh, depression? But the other option is what's called univariate analysis. And that's what you would use if you had a more advanced or more sophisticated type of research question. Like, is there an interaction between gender and the type of variable, the type of therapy that you get, right? Maybe they interact. Maybe some therapies work better for men and other therapies work better for women in terms of how they impact depression. Um, but we're gonna stick with things simple. We're only gonna do a one-way ANOVA today. So we're just going to use the compare means command and choose one-way ANOVA. And then you will see a box that looks like this. And the nice thing actually about this command is it allow, actually allows you to do several different one-way ANOVAs at once, all exploring the same factor. But we're just going to do one. We're going to do one ANOVA. Um, and here you have all your different variables on the left, all the things you asked people or all the things somebody asked people. And again, you could right click on this to change how you view these variable names. And then you're going to put the factor, the group based variable down here where it says factor. Then you're going to put the quantitative variable the variable that will have, um, that will vary from more to less in our working example, depression, you're going to put that over here under dependent variable. Now I don't have therapy groups or depression among my students. So when we actually go to a, a real world example, what I'm going to use for my data set in my class is I'm going to use different ethnic groups. I asked students which what ethnicity they were and I allowed them to free respond to give me any answer that they liked. And then what I did is I used the recode command to group them by common characteristics. So anybody that said they were white or Caucasian got put in a group. Anyone who told me that they were um, Latin or Latinx or Latino or from um, a Latin American country, um, they were coded as Latinx. Anyone who said they were black or African American were coded as um, in that common group. Um, so we ended up with six different ethnic groups. So that is, and then I recoded it to be one through six. And that gets put under here, under factor, as E-T-H-R-C, F-R-C. So I use this little arrow here to take F-R-C and move it over here. And then what am I comparing? I decided to compare the different ethnic groups on the number of pets that they have. So I found pets on this list, and I moved it over here to the dependent variable um, field. The last thing I did was make sure to 
to check the descriptives box. The reason why that is important is so I can see which groups actually had the higher or lower averages because if there is a statistically significant ANOVA, if the test tells me that there are differences in the average number of pets among these different groups, I may want to follow up to see which groups differ because the ANOVA can't tell me that. It can only tell me that somewhere among these six groups, there are differences. So once I have chosen all of my variables and clicked the descriptives options, I will click OK. And this is the output that will show up. Here we have all the different sample sizes for my individual groups for a total of 58, 18 Latinx students, 22 white students, seven Persian students, three black students, six Asian or Pacific, Island student, uh, Pacific Islander students, and then two students um, who self-identified as mixed. Here I have the average number of pets for Latin students or Latinx students is two. The average number of pets for white students is 1.18. The average number for all the way down here to the average number for Asian or Pacific Islander students was 0.5. But all of that is going to be boiled down to this one F statistic. It's called an F statistic because the person who developed ANOVA, his name was Fisher. And so he named his test after himself. We have just conducted an analysis of variance called an ANOVA, but it's also, we also then had PSPP calculate an F statistic as a part of an F test. All of these are synonyms for the same procedure. And as we can see, this is the p-value. This is the probability of our data if everything we see here is just due to chance, if there's nothing going on, if these differences among the averages are simply due to random chance and there's nothing meaningful about the particular ethnicity that you're in. We just happen to get students with more or less pets. If this probability is small, if this p-value is small, then we reject the null hypothesis, which says that all the groups are the same. By convention, our cutoff that we call alpha is usually 0.05. And here we can see that the significance or p-value is 0.024, which is smaller than that conventional criteria. So in everyday language, we can say there's a very small probability we saw this pattern of averages simply due to chance. The null is true. So we reject that null hypothesis because the probability of our data in a null version of the world, because that probability is very small, we reject the null hypothesis. There's a very low probability that our findings are just due to chance. This probability, this p-value, is less than 0 0.05, which is the conventional cutoff. And here is how, then, I would report that using APA style. The F statistic for these data for 5 and 52 degrees of freedom is 2.85, See, here it is, with a p-value of 0 0.024. I can conclude that among these different ethnicities, at least one of these averages is different from another. The average number of pets is being influenced by your ethnicity. That there are differences among the ethnicities in terms of the number of pets people own. Now, I don't know where they, the differences are, though. I can sort of eyeball the means and see, well, the Latinx students have the most pets and black students have the least. Oh, no, no. Mixed students have the most pets and uh, black students have the least pets. But I don't know exactly if all of these differences are statistically significant. So I would, I'm going to need to do some follow-up t-tests. Now, if, if you're just watching this video to learn PSPP, that's great. Uh, but if you need some instruction on ANOVA and the logic of ANOVA and how and why you should do follow-up t-tests, I do encourage you to watch my ANOVA lectures, my conceptual lectures that accompany these PSPP lectures as well. So how do we use PSPP to fo conduct a follow-up t-test? Well, uh, there were six different ethnicity groups. So in actuality, if I wanted to compare all six groups to all the other groups, I'll actually have to do 15 different t-tests, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to choose two groups and conduct uh, an independent samples t-test on the groups. So here I have chosen the um, Latinx and Asian and Pacific Islander uh, ethnicity groups, the students self-identified. And I find if I look up at my, at my, uh, output here, I see that there are two, Latinx students have on average two pets, 
There was 18 Latinx students, and they had, on average, two pets. The Asian or Pacific Islander students, there were six of them, had, on average, half a pet. So when I combined all the different pets together, they had, on average, a half a pet. So here's then how I would plug in those numbers. Here's two pets for the Latinx students, half a pet for the Asian Pacific Islander students, because I'm going to compare the average number of pets. Here is where I'd put the sample size for the first group, the Latinx group, and here is where I would put the sample size for the second group, the students who identified as Asian or Pacific Islander. Now this number for those who've learned about independent samples t-test, is usually the pooled variance of both of the groups because t-tests are the effect of being in a, two different groups over standard error. And normally you need pooled variance to get at the variability. But we are, have already a term that we can use for the amount of variability among our, among our people or uh, if the null is true. That is our error variance which up here is the mean square within. So instead of using pooled variance here, I'm just going to use the mean square within, which is a type of variance. It's the error variance. So instead of pooled variance now, we use the mean square within in our t-test equation. And so I pop it right in here. And now I have all the different numbers for my independent samples t-test, um, which I'm going to conduct. Now, again, if you haven't learned conceptually how to do these follow-up t-tests, I can encourage you to uh, watch my ANOVA lecture because the type of approach I'm going to take now is called the Fisher's LSD approach, where I'm going to use the degrees of freedom within, because I used the mean square within error variance, for my follow-up t-tests, I'm going to use those degrees of freedom. And up here, I can see I have 52 degrees of freedom for that error variance, that mean square within. And so I look up the critical values using 52 degrees of freedom, and I find out that they are 2, plus and minus 2, for an alpha of 0.05, which again is that conventional criteria. So I can, then I just calculate. I subtract, and then I do 1 over 18, and then I do 1 over 6 to get these two decimals, add them together, then I multiply that by 1.81, which again is the mean square within. Then I do the square root of the product, which is 0 0.404, to get 0.636. So first I get rid of my fractions, then I add the two decimals together, then I multiply these two numbers together, and at the, at, to get this value here, 0 0.404, then I take the square root of it to get my standard error for this independent samples follow-up t-test. Then ultimately, my statistic, my inferential t-statistic is 1.5 over 0.636 of 2.36. That is my t-statistic. It's bigger than my critical value of 2, so I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. It looks as though Latinx students at Pierce have more pets on average than Asian or Pacific Islander students. At least in my data, these findings are statistically significant. Now, before I sign off, I'm going to really quick run through PSPP doing this, exam this, exa this exact example live and in person for you so everyone can get a sense of exactly what I'm going to be clicking and what you might click if you're going to do this kind of example for yourself. Hello there again, here I am in PSPP, and I'm just going to walk through the one-way ANOVA using my real data in real time. So. First things first is I'm going to go to Analyze. Then as a reminder, I'm going to go to Compare Means. Then choose the one-way ANOVA. I'm going to right-click in here so I can just see all the names a little more clearly. Ethnicity is my factor, so I choose it and I move it over. Pets is the quantitative variable that I'm going to have different averages for. So I pop it over here, click descriptives, and then choose OK. Here once again is that very same output that pops up once you click OK. Thanks for watching and in our next video we'll be exploring correlation and regression. I'm Dr. Jenny signing off.